This is another interview for the Dark Archive interview series. Um, it's recorded during Resistance Day, and we're super excited to have um, a wonderful keynote speaker, Sue Widdicombe from the University of Edinburgh. She's a senior lecturer in the School of Philosophy, Psychology, and Language Sciences. Thank you very much, Sue, for a wonderful presentation which you've just done and which I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about during this uh -huh. interview. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. But I first want to start by asking you how you developed uh, your current research interest in discourse psychology, conversation analysis, discourse analysis, in that area. Okay. Um, I suppose, that, I mean, originally when I started um, doing work on youth subcultures, and that was kind of when way back, um, to my PhD, I was I was very struck with the way in which so much work didn't actually kind of make any reference to members of youth subcultures themselves. It was all very semiotic mm. um, analysis, and and so I suppose I I was kind of interested in 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 talking to people, in trying to give them a voice, and I was also very struck at the time by, by some of the sort of ethogenic um, idea that if you want to know something, then maybe the first port of call is to actually ask the relevant person. So if you want to know about punks, then it might be a good idea to go and speak to a punk. Um, and so at the time I was doing that, there wasn't really a way of... Um, or, or maybe I, I guess that the, the way that was coming in was, was, was kind of discourse analysis mm -hmm. as a pot and whatever else. So I started kind of developing that sort of interest um, cautiously, perhaps. Um, and I do remember uh, very vividly, um, because Rob and I have known each other for a very long time, but, um, but he was... was getting interested in conversation analysis. I remember having a lot of arguments with him uh, about how you couldn't quite abandon experiments. Uh, you still had to hold on to those. But, but uh, uh, over time, you know, I, I, I think I, you know, you, and especially as I, as I kind of got more interested in the critical mm -hmm. um, social psychological mm -hmm. literature, I sort of moved more and more into sort of doing... Um, Dis, you know, discourse analysis, discourse of psychology. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not, you know, I, I mean, it, I, I guess that it doesn't, it doesn't really kind of um, make those sorts of questions that I went into that with, like yeah. giving voice to people. It, it, I mean, it, it's not an ideal method for that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you sort of start. Having those kind of yeah. epistemological debates, um, you know, one, once you've sort of started getting into um, using alternative methods. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, so that was kind of at the tail end of my PhD, and, and a lot of my PhD was on just ordinary youth groups, mm -hmm. and it was, it was quite statistical, because at the time um, I was informed that if you didn't, do some kind of statistics, then you could possibly get a PhD. Um, mm. So it was the sort of it was the it was the thing I really wanted to do, but I kind of went through the um, the quantitative um, things first. And I and, and I learned. I mean, I did a lot of um, open-ended questions. I don't know, it wasn't um, it wasn't an experimental piece. Of <laughs> yeah, I see. Um, so you mentioned. Uh, the project that you and Robin Wood have mm -hmm. been working on, the um, uh, youth subculture mm -hmm. project. Can you tell us a little bit about that? How the project started? Um, about the methods? Mm -hmm. Some of the insights and that kind of stuff. I guess it was a combination of um, coming of, of learning about social identity theory. Been very very taken social identity theory, the notion of how important identities were, um, with a personal kind of interest in youth subcultures, um, and thinking about how, how those two elements could come together. Mm -hmm. and, and it was that sort of then 
um, for my undergraduate research, it was kind of using social identity theory as a way of understanding youth subcultures. And that, that's kind of where I began that interest. Um, and it, 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 it was actually kind of turned to be almost impossible to get enough people <laughs> People in it to, who were because I recruited through um, colleges and schools and so on, impossible to get enough people, mm. punks and so on, and, and so actually sort of get out with that and, and hit the streets. And questionnaires weren't going to be any good um, for that. And so, uh, you know, I guess the method adapted to what I was interested in. Um, so I, so I, I, I kind of like to sort of interview uh, in accordance with, with social identity theory. Um, Rob, at the same time, guess, is getting interested in, in conversation analysis. So we sort of brought those things together, really, sort of the interview material, and a different way of looking at it. Not just in, not in terms of the content, but in terms of some of the sort of the, the difficulties um, that we were having in, I suppose, actually getting people to talk about their identities. And that, that was, became kind of more interesting, that, that sort of, that resistance, mm -hmm. that way. And, and so kind of looking at, at the interviews became more about, not, not about punks, but it was about individuality. Mm -hmm. And that's what took me to Syria. Um, really, or, or took me to that interest in, in sort of cross cultural um, literature on self. So, that uh, links very well to my next question. <laughs> I was wondering if you, could, if you could talk a little bit about your project in Syria. In Syria? Mm -hmm. um, it was, I have to say, it was an amazing experience. I first went to Syria in 93. I thought, what a great place Syria is. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to learn Arabic, <laughs> and so I came back, I started learning formal Arabic. I, um, I then sort of started thinking, how can I, how can I combine these two? You know, I, I think that sometimes yeah. sort of, um, research projects can be a little bit circumstantial, and, and <laughs> in my own case, like, okay, how, how, can I, how can I develop a project? I was quite interested at the time, I was getting interested in critical social psychology, oh. I was interested in trying to find out more about psychology in the Arab world, mm -hmm. or in Syria in particular. Mm -hmm. And I went out there initially, uh, well, first time was holiday, but, but after that I went out with, the, with real Arabic students to take an Arabic course, and I went to the university to see what was going on there, what contacts, whether I could do um, such a project. Mm -hmm. And, and it sort of evolved. It evolved into, um, okay, I'm I, I was quite interested in getting away, having an adventure, wow. um, learning Arabic. And, and it just seemed, it seemed just, just as, as with, the, with the youth subcultures, people weren't, you, you wrote about them without talking to them. Mm -hmm. Similarly, there was a lot on... It's a lot of fundamentalism, a lot of history, a lot of so on. But there was very little that actually involved going out and talking to ordinary um, Syrians on the street or, or any other mm. Arabs. And it was that mm. kind of, you know, there were sort of stereotypes mm. about Syrians abounded. And, and so, again, that kind of notion would be quite nice just to get those ordinary stories, get, you know, listen to people. Mm. Um, so, so the contact in the university plus the um, learning Arabic mm -hmm. um, plus the, you know, that the, the sort of evolved into a, right, I'll go and I will um, go and interview people in Syria. And that's how that came about. And I, and I think, you know, looking at, at, at some of that data and, and then sort of like thinking, actually there are, there are a lot of similarities here in this. So another thing that... Um, mm -hmm. Um, I was curious about was what you're currently working on. If you could talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that. Okay. Um, well, I'm still mining the um, the, the, the the Syrian data. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm, I'm kind of, in some sense, sort of going back mm -hmm. the way, perhaps, to, to one of the other concerns that had, or interests that had, had stimulated that project in Syria, mm. which was to do with notions of self and to do with the way in which we describe ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it, it always struck me that, that, that some of those kind of um, critical discussions about relational selves and so on were kind of missing a trick by, well, mm -hmm. if, we, if we haven't got the language of, of relational selves, then why not look to these kind of developing countries, these collectivist countries, where they are supposed to be kind of collectivist relational selves and see how they describe themselves. And, and so that, that was kind of a, another sort of reason for the interest in self. And I've been, been, been thinking quite a bit about kind of pinning that down, not just through the interviews I've been collecting, some just comparative um, data on, on strengths and weaknesses um, specifically um, and looking at some of the other kind of um, issues around self-description and features of self-description um, uh, particularly um, among Syrians I'm quite interested in the way in which sometimes people describe really terrible things that have you know really traumatic things in very minimalist terms um, so, so I'm still I, I have I have so much data, it, it, you know. Um, so, so there's that. I'm also kind of um, planning on on trying to get back to the to the Middle East because oh, I would love to go back and do some more work mm -hmm. um, over there, or probably on, on again on identities, mm -hmm. um, identities and conflict. I'm quite interested in um, in in mediation work that's going on in. Um, in uh, e Egypt and Dubai, uh, especially. Um, so that's something I would love to do. Um, and I've also kind of been involved with um, people looking at uh, Brechia de Conk and, and uh, people at, uh, who were at Edinburgh um, looking at, 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 I guess, more practical um, uh, studies of social interaction, mm -hmm. more applied. Mm -hmm. Um, studies of, of social interaction. So really, uh, that that's kind of like, you know, kind of the one hand getting kind of okay, but, uh, more practical, more applied. But on the other hand, I do, I, you know, I maintain this interest in in identity. And I guess um, it's probably not a, a popular thing to say, but I, I maybe a kind of part of it. I'm still a social psychologist, and I am interested in things like like identity, like self, like um, those kind of things. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm kind of interested in exploring questions of, of sort of where can we find these, these sort of issues and, and build, um, build on that. And then one final question. Uh -huh. I was wondering if I could ask you a little bit about um, Sedit, so the mm -hmm. Scottish ethnomethodology. Um, discourse, uh, interaction, and talk group. <laughs> <laughs> well done, it's quite a mouthful. <laughs> we never refer to it with all the I, I feel like, yeah, but terms. by referring to it as it with its full name, I'm definitely sure I'm not uh -huh. a member. <laughs> yes, um, it's, it's my lifesaver, actually. Uh -huh. I mean, I think I work in a, in a department which is a very, uh, definitely a sort of a psychology department. It's a very quantitative department. Um, department um, and and it's really through said it that that it's brought together um, people with an interest in in discursive psychology and conversation analysis and I think what's what's interesting is because because it brought together people you know like Eric Laurier in in geography and and Steve Kirkwood in um, social work and uh, you know it, it's actually and people in linguistics as well it's brought together this group of people from quite diverse disciplines and I think that's been really um, interesting um, just to, to, to kind of the, the range of data that you come across because we, we model ourselves on dog of course so we, we have data sessions or sometimes readings Every couple of weeks, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, th I think that's been that's been very good. 
um, and it's actually, I mean, it, it has been going an awful long time. Uh, I can't remember when we started it. We used to meet in the evenings, but then we kind of moved to the um, to the daytime. But it has been going for a good fifteen more years. Wow, that's really impressive. Um, yeah. So hopefully, more and more people will join. Well, and, and, you know, we'd love to. Um, <laughs> we'd love to have more people along. Um, you know, we are a small but regular um, group of people. And um, I think, it, you know, it, it, it's one of those things that actually it's often word of mouth yeah. um, that, that brings people to it. Yeah. Thank you very much for a very interesting interview. Well, thank you. Yes.